Hello viewers, my name is Mr. Debondio. I want to welcome you to this video. In this video we are going to be discussing uh, JAM 2016 General Mathematics uh, Past Questions. So we are going to be discussing JAM 2016 General Mathematics Past Questions. So in a previous video we have uh, discussed uh, 2016 uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So, but we are yet to discuss around 15 because uh, we don't have the access to that yet. But we are going to be discussing around 16 in this video. So, what are we going to be doing? You are going to be telling all the topic where each of the question uh, uh, is uh, scheduled from or gotten from. And also, we are going to be solving each of the questions step by step together. And then we are going to be solving 40 questions together because in this uh, 2016, they were given uh, 40 questions instead of 50 questions. And also, we are going to be picking the correct answer from the options provided. But before we get it started, if you are yet to subscribe to this channel, please click on the subscribe button on this channel right now so that uh, whenever we post, um, information on this channel you'll be the first person to know and uh, also share this video like the video and comment in the comment section of this video so as to help us improve in the next uh, of our video So the first question you are going to be solving is from a logarithm. You have to to evaluate this without using table log 4 base 2 plus log 2 base 4 minus log 5 base 25. And uh, before we can do this, of course, you must know the meaning of logarithm. The log, log of uh, 4 base 2 means how many times can you raise 2 to get 4? That's the meaning of log 4 base 2. How, of, how often can you raise 2 to get 4? How many times can I raise this two to get four? That is uh, two times. How many times can I raise four to get two? That is half times. Four raised to power half will give us two. How many times can I raise twenty-five to get five? That is also half time, because uh, five twenty-five raised to power half will give us five as well. So that means the answer of this one is two. The answer for this is uh, half. Minus the answer for this also half. If you simplify this, so you have that uh, half minus half will give us zero then plus 2 you have say the answer for this one is 2 which is option D question number 2 is from the uh, quadratic equation you have to find the value of P for which this for which the equation s squared minus open bracket P minus 2 multiplied by hex plus 2 P plus 1 equal to 0 as equal roots so uh, for in quadratic equation, we have the nature of roots of quadratic equation. So the uh, the root could be equal and uh, uh, it could be equal, and the root could be uh, distinct and uh, real. The roots could be also be imaginary. So if you remember this, then you know what they are asking you. So in this case, the roots of this quadratic equation are equal. So what is the condition for equal roots? That means the discriminant, which is a uh, D will be equal to B square minus 4 AC. So that is B square minus 4 uh, B square minus 4 AC is equal to 0. So that means uh, that is a condition for equal roots. So like I have here, I have the equation that is uh, that have equal roots. So in this case, we can get our A, it will be 1, and uh, our B will be minus P minus open bracket P minus 2. And our c will be 2p plus 1. So this is the condition for equal root b square minus 4ac equals to 0. That is the discriminant must be equal to 0. So in this case, we can get our head from here, which is our one, our, our head is 1. 
and our so our a is one other sorry and our b is a uh, minus p minus two so and our c is two p plus one so if you put that into this uh, this uh, condition so our b is a uh, minus open bracket p minus two then you have squared for this b minus four multiplied by a which is one then multiply by c which is two p plus one equals to zero from there we can uh, expand this bracket and expand this as well so we are going to expand this bracket in two places so that should give us a p square minus four p plus four if you understand what you have done here very well then uh, if you multiply this out so we have minus four multiplied by two p that will give us a uh, minus eight p the minus four times uh, plus one give us minus four equals to zero collect the like terms as well you will still be having a uh, p square the minus four p minus eight p will give us minus twelve p then four minus four give us zero so you can factorize p here so you have p into p minus twelve equals to zero so it means that p is equal to zero or p minus twelve is equal to zero as well so from there you can find the value of our p for that year p will be equal to twelve so the value of uh, the value of p is either zero or twelve so which is option um, option a question number three is from simultaneous equation we have to solve these two linear equations simultaneously so we have a uh, 2x plus uh, minus 3y equals to 10 equation 1 then we have 10x minus 6y equals to 5 equation 2 so you can use any of the method you know whether elimination or substitution method so we can uh, here we use elimination method we can multiply equation 1 by 10 and equation 2 by 2 so that's uh, to make this x equal so if you multiply this one by 10 that means that you have 20 minus 30y equals to 100 if you multiply this one by 2, you have 20x minus 12y equals to 10. So then you can now subtract. So you can remove equation 2 from equation 1. Remove this one from this one. So you have 20x minus 20x, that gives us 0. Then minus 30y minus minus 12y. Minus 30y minus minus 12y, that should give us uh, minus 18y. Then 100 minus 10 gives us 19. So we can divide both sides by minus 18 here. And that will give us our y to be minus 5. You can substitute this one into equation 1 or equation 2 to get the value of our x. So put y is equals to, uh, equals to minus 5 into equation 1. So equation 1, we have 2x minus 3 into our y is minus 5 equals to 10. Simplify that for that 2y, the 2x plus 15 equals to 10. Then 2x will be minus 5. You collect like times from there. So x will be minus 5 over 2, which is minus 2 and you have so but if you look at the option provided none of the option is correct so either there's something wrong with the equation uh, equation given to us or there's a typographical error in one or in uh, the option given so but this is the right thing to do question number four also we are given uh, that in this triangle x y z above angle x k z angle s k z skz is a 90 degree which is right angle then side sk is 15 centimeter xz is 25 and yk is 8 centimeter so we have to find the area of a uh, triangle s uh, yz that is the main triangle so what can we do we cannot find the area of this uh, big triangle unless we know the base so this is the base for the base you only have this yk which is a so we don't know kz so if you can find the full length of the base then you cannot find the area of the triangle so how can we do that you can find this from you can find kz using right angle triangle skz since we have two side given so you can find the other side using Pythagoras theorem so from triangle skz Using Pythagoras, so you have the hypotenuse square equals to sum of the square of the remaining two sides, which is 15 square plus kz square. So kz square will be 25 square is 625. Then minus uh, 15 square will give us 225. So we subtract it, that give us 400. So kz will be square root of 400, which is 20. So that means from here to here is 20. So that means y is uh, the length of the base will now be 20 plus 8, which is 28. So therefore, the area of a triangle x, y, z will be half base times height, since we know the height already. 
so the base will now be uh, that will be one uh, one over two times the base is now eight plus twenty which is twenty eight multiplied by that which is fifteen so if you simplify that further two can go in twenty eight that was fourteen times fifteen that gives us one and ten centimeters square as the area so none of the option is correct but I think there's a typographical error in uh, question number B uh, option B so question number fifteen or number five you have to simplify this uh, uh, fractions so what do we do all we need to do is to for change all the missed number to improper fraction so we change this three over one over three that gives us ten over three change minus uh, one over one over one over four that gives us five over four then change this as one over two over five that gives us uh, seven over five then from there we can now apply board mass here so we we'll for multiply first before we now do addition and subtraction so two can go in four that will give us a uh, two then i'll be, uh, be having uh, five over six here so that means we'll be having a uh, ten over three minus five over six plus seven over five so since uh, addition and subtraction i have uh, the same priority in board mass so we can find the whole cm which is a uh, 30 3 in 30 is 5 uh, 3 in 30 is 10 10 times 10 give us 100 6 in 30 is 5 5 times minus 5 give us minus 25 5 in 30 is a uh, 6 times 7 that will give us a uh, 42 simplify this for the 100 minus 25 plus 42 that should give us 117 over 30 so 3 can go up and down so that 39 over 10 which is the trio number nine over ten. So option B is the correct option for question number five. Question number six, you have to factorize. This is uh, from a, a quadratic uh, expression. You have to factorize one minus open bracket a minus b squared. So if you understand this very well, this is a. Uh, uh, if you can see very well, this is a difference of two squares. So this is different of two square in the sense that if you remember, record that uh, when you have a different of two square, a square minus b square, it can be written as a, a plus b into a minus b. This is different of two squares. So you can rewrite this one as well like that. So you have a one square, which is as one minus open bracket a minus b all square. So look at this and this. They look alike. That means this also this is different of two square, which can be written like this. So that means this can be written as a uh, one minus open bracket a minus b, which is this, and also it can also be written as a one plus open bracket a minus b. So this one and this one is uh, this is, this is a difference of two squares. So from there we can simplify further. The, the minus open the bracket here, so you have a uh, one plus a minus b into minus open this bracket. We have a uh, one minus a plus b so which is correct uh, which is correct and uh, if you look at the option provided i think option b is the right option for question number six question number seven is from inequalities you have to find the range of the values of uh, which satisfy the inequalities so we have uh, s over two plus x over three plus s over four less than one so we can find the lcm and multiply through by the lcm so what's the LCM? LCM is 12, so you can multiply through by 12. So you have this one multiplied by 12, this multiplied by 12. Multiply this by 12, I'll multiply 1 by 12. So 2 in 12 is 6, 6 times 7 give us 6x. 3 in 12 is 4, 4 times 7 give us 4x. 4 in 12 is 3. 3 times 7 give us 3s. Then less than 12 times 1, which is 12. So 6x plus 4x plus 3x will give us 13x. Less than 12, divide both sides by 13 you have s is less than 12 over 13 so which is uh, option a question number eight uh, is from probability you have a crate of soft drink contain 10 bottles of coca-cola eight of, or eight of fantas and six of sprite if one bottle is selected at random what's the probability that it is not called not a coca-cola bottle so it's very simple. We have a Coca-Cola to be 10 bottles, Fanta is 8 bottles, Sprite is 6 bottles. So total bottle there will be 24 bottles. So the probability that uh, not Coca-Cola, that will be, is so if they did not pick Coca-Cola, so what would that mean they, they either pick uh, Fanta or they pick what? Sprite. So probability of not Coca-Cola will be probability of Sprite or probability of 
so probability of Fanta or probability of Sprite and what's the probability of Fanta that will be 8 out of 24 plus probability of Sprite is a uh, uh, 6 out of 24 also so I can take the whole CN that will be 8 plus 6 over 24 and that should give us 14 over 24 and that will give us 7 over 12 so option D is correct option for question number 8 question number 9 is from uh, uh, application of differential calculus so and uh, that of uh, integration as well the gradient of a curve is 2s plus 1 and the curve passes through 2 comma 0 find the equation of the curve so you are given the gradient of the curve 2s plus 1 and we know that gradient is the same thing as a difference a derivative or differentiation so that means that uh, the the y the hair should be equal to 2s plus 1 because this was this implied gradient as well so from there we can uh, cross multiply there so if you cross multiply there uh, you'll be having a uh, dy equals to 2s plus 1 multiplied by the x so you are cross multiplying this so the s will multiply this so you have this so you can integrate both sides so as to get a y don't forget we're looking for equation of the curve so that means you need to get a uh, 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 y and you need to get x so we need to get the dependent variable and independent variable so integrate this integrable side so you have this then if you integrate the y you have y then if you integrate this you have a 2x raised to power 2 over 2 plus we integrate a constant that gives us x then plus c so 2 can take care of 2 so you have y equals to x squared plus x plus c then we need to get the constant c the ball of the constant c and that's why you are giving the a coordinate that the a coordinate that the, the curve passes through which is 2 comma 0 so that means our y is 0 and our s is 2 so put that into this equation you find your c so you have zero at 2 comma 0 you have 0 which is our y equals to 2 squared plus 2 plus c so that should give us uh, 4 plus 2 that give us 6 then 6 comes here you have minus 6 so c will be equal to minus 6 and I put that here you have our uh, y equals to x squared plus x minus 6 which is the equation of the curve that we're looking for but none of the option is there correct so either something is wrong with the equation given to us or there's a typographic error so question number 10 is from uh, differentiation as well we have to differentiate cos q minus sine q squared with respect to q so it's very very simple so of course you cannot differentiate a function unless there is a the dependent variable y so because you are di differentiating y with respect to q so don't forget that so most, most cases they will give you like this but you need to forward write your dependent variable y equals to what is given to you so the best way to go about this is to forward expand the bracket so you expand this in two places so we have y equals to this multiplied by this so you are expanding the bracket in two places now so let's expand so we have a uh, cos q times cos q give us a cos square q then cos q times minus sine q give us a minus cos q sine q uh, minus cos q sine q then this minus sine q also multiply this to br the bracket here as well so we have minus sine q times cos q that give us a minus cos q sine q as well just like what you have in here then minus sine q times minus sine q that give us a plus sine sin square q so if you simplify further we have y is equal to sine square q plus cos square q minus this minus this as well so they are the same thing so that give us a 2 of that minus 2 cos q sine q then if you remember very well one of the identity of the geometric ratio sine square theta plus cos square theta, uh, plus cos square theta will give us what 1 so that means sine square q plus cos square q will give us 1 so that may be having y is equals to 1 minus 2 cos q sine q so from there as well if you remember the identity one of the identity of a trigonometric ratio of compound angle so one this is an identity of one of the trigonometric ratio of compound angle, of double angle now double angle so if you recall that the sine 2 q will give us 2 cos q sine q so sine 2q will give us a 2 cos q sine q so what you're having here is similar as sine 2q so that means we having y is equals to 1 minus sine 2q then from there you can differentiate this so if i differentiate a y 1 that give us 0 
so we are not to differentiate this uh, function of function which is sine minus sine 2, two q so if you differentiate that uh, you have the y dp equals to if you use the you can use chain zero here but that will be long method so you can use the shortcut so i'll differentiate this to 2p that will give us a uh, uh, 2 this minus is this minus is there so you have minus then differentiate 2p that will give us a uh, 2 then you now differentiate cos uh, 2p and so to differentiate cos that will give us a uh, sorry differentiate sine rather that will give us cos then you now have your 2p so that will give us a uh, minus 2 cos 2p as the answer which is the uh, option uh, option a question number 11 same still on the trigonometric ratio as well we have uh, if time q is equal to 5 over 4 comma and we have to find sine 2q minus cos 2q as well so of course you know, we know that this trigonometric ratio we need to first of all find the value of uh, uh, all the sides of the triangle so draw your triangle include angle q angle angle uh, q so if you include angle q there then tan is opposite of adjacent opposite of adjacent so that means you have 5 here and you have a 4 here then you can find the third side using Pythagoras theorem so by using Pythagoras theorem you have uh, the hypotenuse square which is s square equals to 5 square plus 4 square that gives us 25 plus 16 that gives us 41 so x will be square root of 41 then we have to simplify sine 2q minus cos 2q so if you remember the identity of a compound uh, double angles as well in trigonometric ratio you know that a sine 2q is same thing as a 2 sine q cos q then minus cos 2q that one has three identities but one of them is a cos squared q minus sine squared q for cos 2q so from there what can we do you can open bracket with the minus so you have a minus cos squared q plus sine squared q as well if you open this my, uh, bracket with the minus so from there now from there we can now simplify further we can find our sine q sine is opposite of hypotenuse that will be we have a 2 multiplied by sine q is a 5 uh, opposite of hypotenuse which is 5 over uh, square on sort 41 multiplied by cos q is a cos is higher side over hypotenuse higher side over hypotenuse that will be 4 over sort 41 minus cos theta and uh, cos squared q is a cos is a 4 over uh, sort 41 then squared it plus sine is a 5 over sort 41 then squared it as well from there we can simplify further so 2 times 5 times uh, 4 give us uh, 40 then over so 41 times so 41 will give us a 41 so you have 20 40 over 20 for um, over 41 minus 4 square will give us 16 over so 41 square will give us a 41 plus 5 square is 25 over so 41 square uh, so 41 square is 41 so from there we can uh, find the LCM which is 41 then bring the numerators together 40 minus 16 plus 21 uh, 25 and that should give us a 49 over 41 so option C should be the answer but uh, there's a typographical error here as well so question number 13 is from inequalities we have that if y is equal to x squared minus x minus 12 find the range of values of x for which y is greater than or equals to 0 so for us simplify this quadratic e equation here yeah? so of course if you s want to solve this uh, quadratic uh, expression at the right hand side we need to find the two factors of minus 12 that we can have together that will give us a minus uh, x here and when you multiply them together it gives us minus 12 and that should be minus 4x plus 3x which replace this minus x here so i believe you know how to solve quadratic equation so from there you can factorize y is equals to x is common x into x minus 4 then plus 3 is common here so you have minus 4 so you have y is uh, into uh, is equals to x plus 3 into x minus 4 so we know that uh, we are told that uh, uh, y is equals to this then uh, y is also greater than or equal to 0 so that means whatever you have here will be greater than or equal to 0 as well 
because this is equal to zero uh, equal to y and uh, our y is greater than or equal to zero as well so that means this is we could greater than or equal to zero which literally mean that uh, our s plus three will be less than or equal to zero or our s minus four will be greater than or equal to zero so from there we can simplify that for that s will be less than or equal to zero minus three or s will be greater than or equal to what four which so and uh, we can see that the uh, option uh, b is the correct option for question number 13. question number 14 a man bought a second hand photocopy machine for 34,000 his service is at a cost of uh, uh, 12 uh, 2000 and then sold it at a profit of 15 percent what is the selling price so of course we need to get all the total the total cost price if he bought it at this price and he also serve it as 2000 so that means the total cost price will be 34,000 plus the 2000 naira he used to service it that will give us 36,000 then we know that the uh, percent profit is a profit over cost price multiplied by 100 and we know that the profit is selling price minus cost price so from there we have been given the percentage profit which is 15 percent equals to our let the selling price be hex minus the cost price is 36,000 over 36 multiplied by 100 so zero can took zero can cancel to zero here so we'll be having 15 equals to x minus 36,000 over 360 cost multiply we have your s minus 3,000 uh, s minus 36,000 equals to 15 times 360 will give us a 5,400 then take this to the other side so that to collect light times you have x is equal to 5,400 plus 36,000 and that should give us a 41 as the selling price so that's your option quest option C here question number 15 find the radius of the sphere whose surface area is a 154 centimeter squared so that's the measuration of solid shape in this case we are measuring sphere so what's the surface area of a sphere that would be 4 pi r squared and we'll be giving the value of the surface area which is 154 equals to 4 pi r squared so from there we can divide him is to find the radius so I can divide both sides by the 4 pi so I have r square will be equal to 154 divided by 4 pi and the pi is 20 over 7 so I have 154 over 4 times 20 over 7 so r square will be if you simplify this that will give us 12.25 then find the square root of both sides so r will be 3.5 centimeter as the radius so which is option b as well Question number sixteen: The sum of the the sum of the first n terms of the arithmetic progression 5, 11, 17, 23, 29, 35 is dash. So we are looking for the sum of the n term of this uh, arithmetic progression, knowing that the first term is a and the common difference is a uh, six. So we know how to find the common difference. That will be eleven minus five or seventeen minus eleven. So that will give us six. So and we know that some of the some of the terms of of an arithmetic progression is a uh, n over 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 multiplied by d so we are summing to the to we are summing to, we are finding some of the n terms so we need the first term which is 5 and we need the common which is 6 so substitute this into this so we have some of the n term equals to n over 2 into 2 times a is 5 plus open bracket n minus 1 and our d is 6 so from there simplify further we have n over 2 into 10 plus open bracket the is n minus 6 so 10 minus 6 will give us a 4 so we have n over 2 into 4 plus 6 so 2 is a common in a bracket you can factorize 2 out of the bracket we have n over 2 times 2 into 2 plus 3 n 2 can take care of 2 years so we have a n into uh, 3 uh, n into 3 n plus 2 which is the n term Sum of, so which is the sum of the end term rather and the uh, option b is the correct option for question number 16 question number 17 is also from the application of a uh, differential calculus we have to find the value of uh, which made the function s into 4 minus s a maximum so that means uh, you need to make this equals to dependent variable y y is equal to s into plus into s in y is equals to x into 4 minus x open the bracket if you simplify for that we have y is equals to 4s minus s squared so you can differentiate this the y here will be equals to 4 
minus 2x so at the maximum uh, the gradient will be cut to 0 so the y there will be cut to 0 so that means this will cut to 0 as well 4 minus 2x equal to 0 collect like times you have to minus 2 equals to minus 4 divide both sides by minus 2 s will be equal to 2 which is option c so question number 18 how many ways can a delegate of three be chosen from five men and three women if at least one man and one woman must be in the must be included so the question is from combination so we have a three delegate to be chosen from five men and three women and the one one man and one woman must be included so that means for the first for the for the men now you'll be having five combination uh three that will be you are having three delegate now three delegates so you have and we have five men which is five combination three but because they said one man must be there so that means you need to remove one that one that must be there from the from the three delegates so you'll be having five combination three minus one multiplied by for the woman as well we have uh, three women and three are to be chosen as well so we have about from the three women that should be chosen one is already so the from the wom three women that are on ground one must be there so you need to remove one uh, uh, you need to remove this three from so you need to remove one from the three that should that to be chosen as well so that means you'll be having five combination three minus one multiplied by five three combination three minus one as well. So that should give us a five combination two multiplied by three combination two. Then this will give us five factorial over five minus two factorial two factorial multiplied by three factorial over three minus two factorial two factorial. Which I believe you know we got this. <coughs> so five minus two factorial give us a three factorial there two factorial. 3 factorial over 3 minus 2 give us 1 factorial 2 factorial so you can expand this 5 factorial to give us a 5 times 4 times 3 factorial so that you can cancel the 3 factorial down and I can also expand this 3 factorial to be 3 times 2 factorial so that I can cancel this 2 factorial so this cancel this we have a 20 here uh, divided by 2 2 factorial is 2 so that give us 10 then 2 factorial can take care of 2 factorial that give us a 3 over 1 that give us a 3 so that we have 10 times 3 and that gives us a 30, 30 ways, which is option D, so option C rather. Question number 20, a student measured a piece of a rope and found that it was 1.26 meters long. If the actual length of the rope was 1.24 meters, what was the percentage error in the measurement? So we know that we need to find error before you can find percentage error. An error is uh, the measure length minus actual length that should give us a 0 0.02 and percentage error will be error divided by actual length multiplied by 100 so that should give us a 0 0.02 divided by the actual length is a 1.24 times 100 simplify that for that will give us a 1.61 percent as the percentage error so one of the options here is correct question number 21 is from sword we have to rationalize this sword to sort 3 plus sort 5 over sort 5 minus sort 3 and we know that if you want to rationalize a sort we need to first of all find the conjugate of the denominator so we need to find the conjugate of the denominator and use it to multiply up and down so what's the conjugate of sort 5 minus sort 3 that will be sort 5 plus sort 3 so that will now multiply up and down so I'm multiplying this which is this by the conjugate of this which is this so we are multiplying it uh, up and down by the conjugate which is what you are having here so from there now we can now expand the bracket but the denominator is a different of two square so that means uh, we can apply the uh, different of two square to the denominator so we have sort 5 squared minus sort 3 squared then the numerator we can expand out 2 sort 3 times sort 5 will give us a uh, 2 sort 15 2 sort 3 times sort 3 will give us x6 then sort 5 times sort 5 will give us a uh, 5 then sort 5 times sort 3 will give us sort 15 there's a video I made on sort that explain everything on sort if you don't understand what you have done there please visit my video on sort you will understand what I have done here so from there we can simplify for that 6 plus 5 will give us a level then 2 sort 15 plus sort 15 will give us a 3 sort 15 
so we have 11 plus 3 sort 15 sort 5 square will give us 5 minus sort 3 square will give us 3 so from there that should give us a uh, 3 sort 15 plus 11 over 2 so I think option A is the correct option for question number A for question number 21 rather question number 22 is from my uh, inequality as well we have to solve the inequality minus 6 less than or equals to 4 minus 2x less than 5 minus x so we know that uh, this inequality is a uh, is a it it, it means two statements it means minus 6 is less than or equals to 4 minus 2x and it also means that uh, 4 minus 2x is less than 5 minus x so from there let's simplify one after the other for this first statement we have minus 6 less than or equals to 4 minus 2x collect light terms from there we have a uh, 2x less than or equals to 4 plus 6 that will give us a uh, 2x less than or equals to 10 then s will be less than or equals to 5 then let's solve the second statement second statement will be 4 minus 2x less than 5 minus 2 minus x so we have 4 minus 2x less than 5 minus x color light time as well we have minus 2x plus x less than 5 minus 4 so that give us minus x is less than 1 divide both sides by minus 1 or multiply through by minus so we have that uh, s will be greater than minus 1 so combine these two inequalities now it should be having minus 1 will be less than x less than equal to 5 so which is uh, option b question about 23 a cylindrical pipe 5 centimeter long with radius 7 meters has one end point opened what is the total surface area of the pipe so this is a uh, meter not centimeters so there's a typographical error there as well so when you have a cylinder with one one hand open so that means the other hand is closed so that means the total surface area will be curve surface area which is 2 pi r h plus the area the area of the the hand that is closed so that should give us total surface area to be 2 pi r h which is for curve surface area plus the area area of the side that is closed which is a a circle that will be pi r square so from there i can sim i can factorize pi r out here so you have pi r into 2 h plus r so the pi is 20 over okay we have an answer in terms of pi so we can leave that out there and our radius is 7 into 2 times the height is 5 plus 7 so we have 7 pi into 2 times 5 is 10 plus 7 that's 17 we simplify that for that that will give us 119 uh, pi meter squared so something is wrong with the option also 24 we have to find the standard deviation of this uh, on group data 2 3 5 and 6 so we know that the standard deviation is not possible unless we find the mean first because we need mean to find standard deviation so what is mean so we add all this number together to divide it by the number of data we have there which is 4 so we know that mean is similar as x bar so that should give us a uh, 16 over 4 that give us a uh, 4 so we know that standard deviation of an ungrouped data is the square root of the summation open bracket s minus s bar squared over n so we need to compute our table this is our x so which are the data given to us so we need to compute our x minus x bar so this is our x bar which is 4 so we have uh, our x here so 2 minus 4 gives us minus 2 3 minus 4 is minus 1, 5 minus 4 is 1, 6 minus 4 is a 2. Then we now square it. Square this will give us minus 2 square is 4, minus 1 square is 1, 1 square is 1, 2 square is 4. Then sum this together. We have a 10 if we sum it together. Then put it back into this formula. We have the standard division to be square root of 10 over our n is 4. So that should give us a 2 can go here, 2 can go here. That will be sort of 5 over 2 which is the option A question number 26 is from logarithm so we are given that the log y minus 1 base 4 plus log uh, half of x base 4 equals 1 and the uh, log y, y plus 1 base 2 plus log uh, x base 2 is equal to 2 we have to find the value so for x and y respectively 
so this is a little bit challenging but no problem you can solve it together so for the first one we have that a uh, log uh, this plus this equals to one and you have the same base so we can apply the loss of logarithm here so plus we change to multiplication so pick one of the logs so you have a log open bracket this uh, multiplied by this is equal to one so we are addition has changed to multiplication now so we know that uh, this means that uh, we can raise 4 to power 1 equals to this so that means you have a y minus 1 into half of s equals to 4 to power 1 which seems as 4 so we can call that equation 1 then let's go to equation this second one we have that a uh, log y plus 2 y plus 1 base 2 plus log s base 2 equals to 2 we can also apply law of log rhythm here so you have a log open bracket this is also addition so this will multiply this so we have x multiplying y plus 1 equals to 2 so according to the definition of log that we are going to raise 2 with 2 as well to get this so we have x into y plus 1 equals to 2 raised to the power 2 and that should give us a s into y plus 1 equals to 4 you can call that one equation 2 as well so we have to solve equation 1 and 2 simultaneously now to get our x and y so for equation 2 we can then make x solve the formula here so by dividing both sides by y plus 1 so if you have your s is equal to 4 over y plus 1 you can call that one equation 3 then we can now take put this equation 3 into equation 1 so whenever we see x you put 4 over y plus 1 so that means you'll be having a uh, you'll be having a uh, uh, equation one you'll be having y minus one then multiply by one over two then multiply by this x which is a uh, s is a uh, four over y plus one then equals to four i hope you understand how we got this this x here is multiplying one over two so we have one over two multiplying next and our s is a uh, 4 over y plus 1 which is this equals to 4 so from there 2 can go in 4 so that means, us two. So that means uh, then that 2 multiply this y minus 1 so that will be having a uh, y minus 1 into 2 over y plus 1 equals to 4 from there 2 will multiply this so you have a uh, 2y minus 2 over y plus 1 equals to 4 cross multiply from there so we'll be having 2y minus 2 equals to 4 into y plus 1 open the bracket 2y minus 2 equals to 4y plus 4 call it like times we have a 4y minus 2y equals to minus 2 minus 4 so that give us a 2y is equal to minus 6 y will be equal to minus 3 then put this y equals to minus 3 into equation 3 to find our hex so and we have x to be equal to 4 over y plus 1 in equation 3 so our y is minus 3 so put that there you have x equals to 4 over minus 3 plus 1 and minus 3 plus 1 is a minus 2 4 over minus 2 equals minus 2 so that means the value of x and y is there you have x comma y equals to minus 2 comma minus 3 so that makes the option c the correct option for question number 26 question number 27 <laughs> is uh, from polynomial when the expression pm square plus qm plus 1 is divided by m minus 1 it has a remainder of 2 and when it's divided by m plus 1 it has a remainder of 4 so find the value of p and q respectively so this is the question uh, the quadratic expression given to us so when you divide it by m minus 1 so the remainder is 2 so that means when you substitute m is equal to 1 into this then it should give us a 2 so if you understand polynomial very well so when i substitute the value of m equals to 1 into this it should give us remain uh 2 so that means uh, p our m is now 1 now so p into 1 square plus q into 1 plus 1 equals to, it will give us uh, this remainder which is 2 so if you simplify for that we have a p plus q equals to 2 minus 1 that give us a 1 equation 1 also this is also dividing this and the remainder is a 4 so that means if I substitute m equals to minus 1 into this quadratic expression it should give me what 4 so put that here as so well you have p into minus 1 square plus q into minus 1 plus 1 equals to 4 
so they give us a p minus q and then equals to 4 minus 1 that gives us a 3 equation 2 so you can solve 1 and 2 simultaneously by adding so that you can eliminate q so add equation 1 and 2 so that we have p plus p that gives us a 2p then q minus q give us 0 1 minus 1 plus 3 will give us a 4 so the variable start by 2 so p will be also 2 from there then substitute for the value of p in equation 1 or equation 2 to find your q then from there put p equals to 2 into equation 1 so we have uh, p is 2 so you have 2 plus q equals to 1 then q will be 1 minus 2 that gives us minus 1 so it means that our p is 2 and our q is a uh, minus 1 so that means the option a is the correct option for question number 27 question number 28 we have to divide this polynomial by this uh, linear expression so it's very simple you have a long division you have to divide it by the long division adding we also find the remainder so we, don't, we, we won't go through this uh, stress but we are now to find the remainder we have to find the quotient so what do we do use your long division this is the polynomial this is the this is the dividend this is the divisor and this is the quotient so 2x in 2x cubed that will give us a s squared then s squared times 2s will give us a minus will give us s squared minus 2s will give us a 2s cubed then s squared times 1 will give us a s squared so you subtract this from this so that's why we introduce minus here to subtract we are subtracting so this minus open the bracket we have a minus 2s cubed minus s squared so 2s cubed minus 2s squared we 2s cubed minus 2s cubed give us 0 11 s squared minus s squared that give us a 10 s squared then this one come down we have plus 17x then 2x in 10 s squared that give us a 5x then 5s times 2s will give us a 10 s squared 5 times 1 will give us a 5x introduce minus as well so this one become minus this also become minus 10 s squared minus 10 s squared give us 0 17x minus 5 that give us a 12x bring down the constant so 2x in 12x that will give us a 6 6 times 2s give us a 12x 6 times 1 give us a 6 subtract as well that give us 0 0 so that means the quotient is a s squared plus 5s plus 6 which is a option b sorry option a if i'm correct question number 29 the identity element which with a respect to the elements elements show in the table above is a so this is a binary operation we have to find the identity element of this uh, from the, using this table and uh, we know that uh, when it comes to identity elements so let's use a as an example uh, if I have to find the identity element of uh, a here so a with uh, the binary operation multiplication multiplying the e which is the identity element should give us the value of what a so an element multiplied by its identity should give us the the element back so that's the rule for identity for finding the identity element of a binary operation so where is the identity element so what can we see from here you can see that a r multiplied by identity element should give multiplied by identity element should give us a uh, r then r multiplied by q give us r r multiplied by r give us r by h give us r so the identity element is going to be hard although the table is not well uh, structured question number 30 is uh, from uh, plane maturation in the uh, figure above pq st is a parallelogram and the tsr is a straight line tsr is a straight line if the area of triangle q r s is a 20 centimeter square find the area of trapezium pq uh, r t so you have to find the area of the the whole the whole shape given the area of this triangle so what we need to do is to find the area of the if you can find the area of this uh, parallelogram then add it to the area of this triangle that will give us the area of what we are looking for but we cannot find the area of this uh, parallelogram since we only know one side given we don't know the, the we only know this parallel line given which is 10 centimeter 
we don't know this side so maybe we know that side we could have gotten the area of the uh, parallelogram but nevertheless we can find the height of this uh, triangle which should also be the height of this parallelogram so using the area of the triangle given to us so the area of triangle QRS is a uh, half base times height so the area given to us is a uh, 20 centimeter square which is equal to half, half times the base is uh, 8 multiplied by the height which is what we don't know so 2 in 8 will give us 4 so we have 20 equals to 4 h divided both side by 4 h will be 5 so that means the height of this triangle is 5 and that means the height of this parallelogram is also what 5 so we can find the area of the parallelogram using the length multiplied by the breadth so we know that we have like a 3 formula for finding the area of a parallelogram so one of them is this uh, length times height so length times height which is same as the height of this uh, uh, triangle so that should give us uh, the base is uh, 10 and uh, the height is 5 so that gives us a 50 so therefore the area of the trapezium will be area of this parallelogram which is 50 plus the area of this triangle which is 20 and that should give us a 70 centimeters squared question number 32 is from uh, uh, differentiation and integration so application of differentiation and integration find the equation of the curve which passes through the point 2,5 and whose gradient at any point is a uh, 6 minus 5y we have solved a question like this in this video if you remember so we are given the gradient which is also same thing as uh, dy dx so our dy dx will be 6 minus 5 we can cross multiply we have dy equals to 6 minus 5 dx can integrate both sides so you have already, if you integrate the y, that gives us y. Then integrate six s, that gives us six s squared over two. Integrate minus five, that gives us minus five s plus c. Then that should give us uh, two can go in six, that gives us three s squared minus five s plus six. So at uh, this coordinate that the curve passes through, we can find our c. So our y is five, our s is two. So we have five equals to five equals to three into two square minus five into two plus six plus c. So 4 times 3 give us a 12. So we have 5 equal to 12 minus 10 plus C. 12 minus 10 is a 2. So we have 5 equal to 2 plus C. So C will be 5 minus 2. That will give us a 3. So put that here. So the equation will become Y is equal to 3 S squared minus 5 plus 3. So which is uh, option D. Question number 33 is from standard standard form. We are giving this divided by this equals to k times 10 to power n where 1 uh, is less than uh, 10 and n sorry where k is less than 10 and n is a whole number the value of k and n are dash so they are expressing they are, they are ex expecting you to express this answer of, the answer of this one in, in standard form like this so if you divide this one by this that should give us a uh, uh, that should give us a uh, 0, 0.000000 in 10 places 7381 which if you change to standard form that will give us 7.381 times 10 to the power minus 11 so compare both sides so that means your k will be 7.381 and your uh, my n will be minus 11 so n will be minus 11 so i think option a is the correct option here question number 34 the 30 boys and s girls sat for a test the mean of the boys score and that of the girl were 6 uh, and 8 respectively find the value of x if the total score was 468 so this is a uh, what problem on uh, uh, mean and this is related to uh, start statistics but involving what problem so what can we do we don't know the sum of the scores for the 30 girl or so for the 30 boys but we know the mean of the 30 boys which is six and we know that they are 30 boys so we can say we know that the mean of or a group of, of data is to have those data together divided by the number of data so the mean which is of the boys of 30 boys which is six equals to the sum of the scores of the boys over 30 so from there you can you can find the sum of the scores of the boys 
so we don't need to find the each of the score for each of the, for the 30 boys but you can you in uh, you have to sum them together so which is sum of the score over 30 so from there you can find the sum of the score will be cross multiplied that will be 6 times 30 that give us 180 so the scores of the 30 boys was 180 the sum of the scores now is 180 then from there if you know that we are told that the scores of the total score of all the boys and the girls are for 468 so if this one belongs to the boys so you can find those of the girl that will be 468 so some of the scores of the s girl s girls will now be 468 minus 180 and that's give us a 288 then from there also we are giving the mean of the girls as well so that will give us a 8 equals to the sum of the sum of the girl sum of the score of the girl which is a 288 divided by number of girl which is x divided by number of girl which is x cross multiply that will give us as 8x equals 288 divided both sides by 8 so s will be equal to 36 so that means uh, we have a uh, 36 girls involved so which is option c question number 35 is uh, on solved we have to rationalize this i think we have solved a question like this today on this video so i'm just going to do this one briefly so we need to find the conjugate of the denominator and multiply up and down by the conjugate so conjugate of solve 7 minus solve 5 is solve 7 plus solve 5 and that what we are using to multiply up and down so the denominator is the original of 2 square so that means you have this then the numerator you multiply them out 5 sort 7 times sort 7 give us a uh, 35 then 5 sort 7 times a uh, sort 5 that give us a uh, 5 sort 35 minus 7 sort 5 times 7 sorry minus 7 sort 5 times sort 7 give us a uh, minus 7 sort 35 the minus 7 sort 5 times sort 5 that will give us a minus 35 as well so from there 35 minus 35 give us 0 5 sort 5 5 sort 35 minus sort minus 7 sort 5 will give us a minus 2 sort 35 so we have minus 2 sort 35 over sort 7 square minus sort, three, so, uh, sort 5 square to give us 7 minus 5 and that should give us a minus 2 sort 35 over 2 so can take care of two years so we have a minus so 35 which is the uh, option c question number 36 is from the uh, simultaneous equation but we have to find the value of s plus y so we have to solve the equa two equations simultaneously we have two s plus three y equals to one s minus two y equals to eleven so we can use elimination method here in this case we want to make y equal equal so we multiply this one by two multiply this one by three so if you multiply that by two equation one by two equation by two by three so we have a uh, 4s plus 6y equals to two for equation one then you have 3s minus 6y equals to 3 for equation two so add the two equation you have 4s plus 3 that give us 7x this plot will give us zero 2 plus 35 and uh, 33 give us 35 the variables are by 7 s will be 5 then put this into equation 1 or equation 2 so put this equ into equation 2 we have a uh, x minus 2y equals to 11 so we have 5 minus 2y equals to 11 2y sorry minus 2y equals to 11 minus 5 that give us minus 6 so that give us a 6 rather 11 minus 5 is um, 6 the variables are by minus 2 y will be equals to minus 3 so in this case we have to find these value of s plus y so our s is 5 and our y is minus 3 so if you simplify it that should give us a 2 so option d is the correct option for question number 36 question number 37 although it does not have an option but we'll solve it and we have solved something like this today a car dealer bought a second hand car for 250,000 and spent 70,000 refurbishing it he then sold the card for 400,000 what is the percent gain so you have solved something like this today something similar but nevertheless total cost price will be 25,000 250,000 times the sorry plus the amount you used to refurbish it which is 70,000 and that will give us 320,000 for the total cost price then uh, the selling price is a uh, 400,000 so we have to find the percentage gain to which so we need to follow, find the gain first so gain which is similar as profit will be selling price minus cost price that will be 400,000 minus 
320,000 that give us 80,000 so that means the percentage gain will be gain over cost price multiplied by 100 so that should give us uh, 80,000 over 320,000 multiplied by 100 if you simplify that give us a 25 percent as the percentage gain question number 38 we have to simplify these uh, indices but I, I see that there is an error in the question I think or there is a typographical error in the option so we are given that this cube root of uh, 640 cube raised to power minus 1 so which is saying that the inverse of everything inside the bracket so you can interpret this one as the 640 raised to power 3 the raised to power cube root mean raised to power 1 over 3 then raised to power minus 1 as well so 3 can take care of 3 so you have a 640 raised to power minus 1 which will be inverse of 640 so none of the option is the correct here as well so question number 39 is from the coordinate geometry we have to find the value of p if the line joining this and this is perpendicular to the line joining this and this so we know the condition for perpendicularity of two lines that means the product product of their gradient should be equal to minus one that's the condition for perpendicularity of two straight line so that means you can find gradient of this the line that passes through these two points you can also find the gradient of the line that passes through these two points then we multiply them to get the gradient together will give us minus one so the gradient of the first one is m1 we have changed the word by changing x so that should be y minus y y2 is minus 2 minus our y1 is a 4 over s2 is a 6 our s1 is a p so we have 6 minus p and that should give us a minus 2 minus 4 is minus 6 over 6 minus p oh then uh, that's the gradient for the first line we cannot there's nothing we can do for that here so for the m2 which is the gradient of the second line we also have the same formula so our y2 is a uh, 3 and our y1 is p so we have 3 minus p here our s2 is a uh, minus 1 and our s1 is 2 so we have minus 1 minus 2 there we simplify this one for that we have a uh, 3 minus p over minus 3 so that means the product of these two gradient will give us minus 1 so m1 m2 is equal to minus 1 that's condition for perpendicularity so that will give us a uh, minus 6 into <laughs> minus 6 over 6 minus p into 3 minus p over 3 equals to minus 1 so we can multiply 6 minus 6 will multiply the denominator 3 will, minus 3 will multiply the denominator so we have a minus 18 min, uh, plus 6 p over minus 18 plus 3 p equals to minus 1 cross multiply from there we have minus 18 plus 6 p equals to minus 1 into minus 18 plus 3 p open the bracket we have this to be 18 minus 3p color light times we have 6p plus 3p equals to 18 plus 18 that gives us 9p equals to 36 divided by 9 p will be equals to 4 so option c is the correct option for question number 39 question number 40 which is the last question for this video but to find the number of sides of the regular polygon whose interior angle is twice the exterior angle so in this case they said interior angle not angles and it is exterior angles not angles so that means we are referencing each interior angle and we are referencing each exterior angle so each interior angle of regular polygon is uh, 180 and minus 360 over n and each exterior angle of a regular polygon is 360 over n so we are told that uh, uh, each interior is equal is twice the exterior so that means this is equal to twice of this so that means uh, you have this is equal to two times of this so if you open the bracket here you have uh, this equals to two times three to give us 720 over n n will take care of n here if you are smart so n will take care of n so you have one over one over eight n 180 n minus 360 or if you don't understand what you have done you can cross multiply if you don't understand what you have done here but if you cross multiply n will stick take care of n at the end of the day so we have 380 minus 360 equals to 720 color light times 180 n equals to 720 plus 360 that will be 180 n equals to 1080 the variable side by 180 n will be equals to 6 so that means the polygon has 6 sides which is option c so we have been able to solve all uh, the jam 2016 the mathematics uh, past question 
and I want to believe you have learned one or two things uh, from this video any error you see in the uh, in the questions is not from my hand it is the question I got so it may be the typographical error they incurred when they are trying to type set the question so all the questions are just a picture so I cannot edit it so that is why it is like that so I want to appreciate you for watching this video do subscribe to this channel if you are yet to subscribe to reach like the video comment in the comment section of this video and share this video with the student who need these resource materials for passing their forthcoming jam examination and i will see you in the next video bye